What is the most effective psychological trick you use? I work front desk in a medical office. Patients hate updating their paperwork. I used to say, look through the pages and make any changes. They would groan and reluctantly take the paperwork, or just complain about it. Now I say, all you have to do is make changes. Saying it that way makes them think it's not much to do and they take the clipboard without complaint. It's the little things that make life at my office easier. How to de-escalate an incredible upset mental health patient who is either unknown or prone to violence, though it works on most anyone. If they are at a level 10 you come in at a level 7. Being completely calm, reserved and polite only pisses people off more as you clearly don't understand the magnitude of the situation. If they are screaming and yelling you need to come in loud but not attacking them. Agreeing with them to a point. Ho oh, what the freak is going on. I understand why you are freaking pissed I would be pissed too. Yeah that is some bull poop the situation really sucks. Look I get it I would be angry as turkey too but us screaming is going to get anything done no matter how angry we are. I'm with you I'd be just as upset. No doubt this is annoying but these are our options. By agreeing with their anger they are more open to listen to you. You then use words to describe their feelings starting out at a 10. Freaking pissed and gradually bringing those descriptive words and your tone down to a 2 annoying. Works pretty much every time but there might be a little up and down in the middle just follow the person's lead while always being a level below them. Saying hello to everybody you know, and with a smile. Often people who know each other from when they were in primary school or just from the block when they were young give each other an awkward smile instead of a happy good day. Just imagine, if someone walks into you twice a year and both times you smile and greet them enthusiastically, they will think of you as a nice person. So little effort for a person to find you friendly. This isn't something I've used but I think it's worth sharing. Darren Brown said that once there was a muscly drunk guy that wanted to beat him up and said the classic what are you looking at? Darren replied with the wall outside my house is 4 feet tall. The idea is that it puts the aggravated person on the back foot and takes them out of that adrenaline filled state. Anyways he sat down and the guy started crying to him about his girlfriend. He is Darren Brown though so I wouldn't recommend this to everyone. Think of my future self. How will my future self feel in an hour or two if I skip my gym session? Will my future self be happy if I do this pile of dishes now, before bed? Or would he prefer to have to do it in the morning, before work? I have a 3 month deadline on this project. Will my future self appreciate my current self taking the first 3 or 4 weeks easy? Or will he be really pissed off? Essentially delayed gratification. Pretty much all the bad stuff gives us instant gratification. While all the good stuff has delayed gratification. I always try to remember that. If I have to wait to reap the rewards then it's probably the best option. I used this technique at university where I couldn't stand the thought of having to answer questions in front of a group of people. So if you find yourself in a group situation where someone, a leader, tutor, manager etc is asking questions that must be answered and you want to avoid being picked so that you don't have to talk then here is my tip if the person locks eyes on you as they ask the question then just as they are about get to the end of their question you break eye contact and look towards another person in the room and hold it their attention is diverted to that other person just as the question ends and the person they are now looking at feels compelled to answer. If however the person starts asking the question while looking at someone else then look at that other person and hold it so you can't get suckered. Use it sparingly because if you do it enough on the same person, they will be on to you. When someone is trying to throw excuses or generally if they're getting a bit tossy about something, Often the best way to handle it is to stare back with mild interest and contribute nothing to their monologue. If you don't give them anything to work with they'll talk themselves into a corner and lose confidence in what they're saying. I learned this trick from an old director who used to control pretty much any meeting room scenario by being the most silent and impassive person in the room. I fondly remember the time someone asked him a ridiculous question and he just stared at him for about 15 seconds. 15 seconds is a long time to be stared at in a room full people. The guy wilted into his chair and nobody could work out if the director was angry or just quietly mulling it over. I worked for a company that had a VP that would use this technique all the time. People would always get nervous and say something stupid or change the subject when the silence got too long. 
It was very effective at getting people to divulge information they shouldn't or give up on topics. He would be considered my bosses. Bosses. Boss. One time in a room with about 60 technical engineers I found myself in a very strange situation where I had to ask him a particularly tough question that most of my peers were afraid to ask. I was in a spot where I knew that if the issue didn't get addressed we all would be out of a job in a year or so. He was in the front of the room and I was near T back. It was protocol to stand when talking so others could see you. I stood up and asked the question knowing full well that I wouldn't get an answer and the starring contest began. One of the other guys claimed he watched the clock and it went on for over a minute. The other VP that was in the room got so uncomfortable that he adjourned the meeting for lunch at 10.45. Long story made short, they sold the company about 4 months later and we were all out of a job anyway. My wife calls this the simplest most manipulative thing I do. Whenever I bump into an acquaintance, meaning not friend, just a person I know, I of course say hi and the conversation goes like this. Me. Hey. How are you name? You look good. Them. Laugh thank you. I'm good how are you? Me. I'm great. I'm on the way to wherever I am going to at the time and I tell them why too. So what are you doing here? Them. Go into same detail to tell me where they're going and why. Me. Alright. Well I won't keep you up any longer than I have. Have a good day name. It leaves people feeling good. Takes away the awkwardness of cutting a convo short and it makes them want to leave. My youngest. 4. Got into the Y phase a little while back. Read an article that said the best way to get them to stop was to ask them I'm not sure. What do you think it is a godsend? They answer their own question. You provide some feedback sounds good to me, and they immediately move on. Freaking awesome. Yep, works like a charm. My daughter is very into this right now. It drives me insane. After a huge bout of questions the other day, she actually said daddy, why do I keep asking why I just stared at her and tried not to burst into huge racking sobs of tears. Edit. Thank you for the silver. As a bit of background, my daughter is lovely. We try very hard to coach and teach her as much about the world as she can understand but she does not stop talking, ever. From the second she kicks our bedroom door open at 6 in the morning until we wrestle her into bed at night. It's a never ending stream of consciousness that includes questions and an endless narration of what she is doing, has done, hopes to do and wants us to do, immediately. She is a walking filibuster that is obsessed with unicorns. I haven't slept past 6.30 in 4 years. Please help me. Edit 2. Thank you for the gold. I'm not going to tell my daughter. I'll never hear the end of it. Instead of arguing I start off by agreeing and then state my point of view after addressing the other person's point. Always ends in a positive interaction. Edit. The idea is to show respect for what the other person thinks. Assuming that the person isn't a complete moron, they more than likely have a valid point. Rather than shutting the person down and telling them they're wrong you listen to them. Then after hearing them out you can bring up your own point of view. The goal is to have a respectful exchange of opinions rather than a flat out argument where two people flat out don't agree with each other and leave each other without learning anything from one another. This is really not too original. But I've seen the wonders positive enforcement does on people's motivation. I teach English to university students. Many of them are in there just because they must and consider learning English a waste of their time. They're usually my worst students. When I give them feedback, I usually heavily stress what they can do already, and congratulate them on their improvement, even if minimal, before telling them the mistakes they had. I do this with all my students, but with those who are particularly dismissive I take extra care to let them know what they're doing right. Some people jumped from hating the language and being terrified of making mistakes to being some of my most proficient students. Overall, each of them showed considerable improvement and engagement in class, never letting that one go. Yeah, like if I'm clearing the dishwasher and my toddler is running around, throwing things into it while I work I'll give him one of his plates, bowls, or utensils and ask him to put it away for me. He will happily do it. Even if he sees I don't have anything to give him, he'll take a stack of his bowls and hands them to me so I can give them back one by one as he puts them away. Kids are stupid, but adorable a lot of the time. Edit. He also helped me with raking the leaves last year. He didn't use a rake, 
but our water fountain net to pick them up and shovel them into the can. Even though he makes chores a little tougher, I'm proud of him. When I'm doing backcountry hiking patrol in a wilderness area I'm supposed to keep an eye out for people with dogs, which are not allowed. The ranger taught me to ask any dog walkers, are you looking for somewhere to walk your dog that gives them the chance to pretend they didn't know about the rule. Signs posted of course, so they don't lose face. Then I give them a brochure with dog friendly trails. It's a brilliantly non-confrontational technique, and I use it in other parts of my life. Edit. Many people are asking why no dogs. It has to do with this park being designated wilderness, which is very different from national, state, local, county parks. Wilderness designation FAQs. List of reasons from park literature. Another edit. Thank you for the silver, kind redditor. I'm happy my suggestion was interesting and uh, helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video, I'm only 16 so I hope you didn't cringe from the editing, I hope we can get to 50,000 subscribers because I wouldn't be here without all of you, so thank you so much for your time and energy, and please subscribe.